Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make these watercolored tea and coffee cards using three of my favorite stamp sets of all time from Honeybee Stamps. So we are going to be using the Coffee Break, Tea Time, and Perfect Blend stamp sets to make these 5x5 five five square shaped cards. So I've cut my Arches Cold Press watercolor paper to 5x5 five five inches and I am stamping my images with Distress Ink in Antique Linen. Distress Ink is a good ink for no line watercoloring. So it is important to use the Distress Ink and not the Distress Oxide ink for this technique. So what will happen with the Distress Ink is as you color in your image, the lines will kind of um, fade and blend into your watercolor. So um, that's why it is such a good ink for this technique. And I'm using the Antique Linen because it goes nicely with the brown and tan shades that most of my images are going to be. So to start, I am going to start by coloring in the croissant. And if you want to get in some coloring practice, these croissants from the Tea Time stamp set are awesome stamps for practicing. So I am going to color in every other little segment on the croissants here. And the reason that I'm doing that is because we're doing watercolor, we need the sections to dry before we add ink to the section directly next to it. Otherwise, our ink will just, um, or our paint will just blend and bleed into the other side. So that's why I'm doing that. So while I let the paint dry on our little croissant segments, we can start coloring in the coffee. And I'm using a nice light brown here. So this is a I can't pronounce the name. It's Gothite, I think, brown ochre. It's a really, really pretty brown um, granulating color by Daniel Smith watercolors. I'm using all Daniel Smith watercolors here. And this color is cobalt teal. And I'm just going to color in our little plate with that. The croissants, the base color for the croissants is yellow ochre. So it's a really, really nice base color for, for baked goods like croissants. And I'm just going to fill in the edges here with some more pigment while the rest of the paint is still wet so that the little edging there can bleed in towards the middle. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more clear water here and just blend everything together. And then I did a little swipe here with um, my brush just to get some of the pigment off just so that we have different color variations on the plate. I'm going to stamp some little hearts here. These are all these hearts are also from the stamp sets that um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Not sure if this is tea time or coffee break. Um, and I'm going to color in our little hearts with some pink. This is quinacridone pink that I'm using here. And I'm just adding a layer and then when it dries a little bit, I'm going over with a second layer just to deepen the color a little bit. And now our little croissant segments are dry so we can fill in the other edges. So what I'm doing here is I am leaving a little white line in between the segments. And the reason for that is one to protect from bleeding, but also it gives it a really, really nice look. It makes it look like there's a little bit of shine or some light reflecting um, off the edges of the croissant. And one way to make your color look really, really interesting is to have contrast in your images and having these little white segments are going to just help make the images pop when we're done. We are also going to add some darker brown streaks to our croissants in a little bit just to um, add even more contrast and make those little flaky layers just really, really come to life. So now I'm just going to deepen the color on those little segments that we just colored in. And most of the coloring detail that I'm gonna add are gonna be on these three croissants that are closest to the center of our card. For the little croissants that are hanging out on the edges, we're just gonna leave them with very little detail. Um, it's just something in watercoloring, you don't have to give the same amount of detail to every single image on the page. Sometimes it's just nice to have some images like off towards the edges that get a little bit blurry and just kind of 
blend into the design and give the eye a little bit of a rest from all the busyness on the um, detail of your focal image. So I'm just going to finish up the coloring on these little croissants on the edges here. And then we can move on to the spoon. So for the spoon, I'm using Payne's Gray. And it's a really, really, um, you can get some really nice, cool gray shades with the Payne's Gray. And I'm just focusing the pigment on the outer edge of the spoon there. And if it looks like I get too much pigment at any point, I'll just pick it up with a um, dry brush with no pigment on it. And so that's a way you can not only add paint with your brush, but you can also take paint away or take water away if your image is a little bit too drippy. We're going to add the little heart to the center of our coffee. And now I'm going to put a very, very light wash of that cobalt teal on the edges of the glass of the coffee cup. Okay, so now is the fun part. We're going to add all the detail to our three croissants in the middle. And this color I'm using is sepia or sepia. And it's a nice dark brown and I'm focusing my shading like on the little edges or little segments where their croissants connect. And I'm following some of the lines that are already stamped into the honeybee images there. And I'm just um, making sure to add some little dark lines like right where the segments connect and then a few really thin lines like going from the top of the croissant towards the middle. Um, and that's just going to give it the effect to make it look like all those flaky layers that you find in croissants. And there's no like one right way to do this. Um, just have fun and put your little um, flaky layers, or your little line suggesting the flaky layers, just wherever it looks right. If you focus, if you start your lines on the edges and have them break towards the middle, um, you can't go wrong. Um, it's always, if you ever get lost with your coloring, just remember the edges of an image should be darker and then the center. If you leave a lot of lightness there, it's always going to um, leave your images interesting and dimensional looking. So a little coloring hack there for you. And then on the bottom edge, so I'm adding those sepia colored streaks on the top. And then on the bottom, this color you see here is some burnt sienna. So it's like a mid-tone brown, and I'm using that for my streaks that come up from the bottom of the croissant and go towards the top there. And sometimes I even add a little bit of the burnt umber streaks on the top too, just to blend those really, really dark brown lines in a little more, making sure to leave lots of white streaks on the croissant so that you get that contrast that really makes the images pop. And now for our coffee, I thought it was a little too light for my taste, so I'm going over it with some of that sepia color. And I'm just going to take some pigment away from the heart there, just so that we have some different um, shades of the brown in the coffee cup. And then I'm going to add just the slightest bit of detail on the edge there to our little croissants. And this is the point where I decided to leave my croissants on the edges a little bit blurry so that the eye is kind of drawn in towards that cup of coffee and the three croissants in the middle. Now is the best part. This is when you peel off the painter's tape and you get that great white edge. I'm going to die cut our little coffee mug and then we're gonna add the coffee mug back on but we're gonna pop it up on some foam tape just to add some interest to the card. So I'm going to tape the whole piece down to a five by five card base. I popped up our little coffee mug on two layers of foam tape and then our sentiment here, um, I just attached it flat. Now I'm going to jazz up the little foam bubbles a little bit in the coffee cup by just adding some little white flecks around the edges of the bubbles. And that's it. So here is our watercolored coffee card. Now this is the version that I made to look like tea. So. All I did was to make it look like tea, I just colored over those little bubbles in the lower left hand side with some watercolor, some brown watercolor, and then you can make it look like it's tea. All right, everyone, those are my cards for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you give these cards a try. Thanks a lot and I will see you again soon in another video.